Hey, hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome. You're tuning in because in this video, it's going to be super exciting. This is one of those like supreme handhelds Embernic has released in the last couple of years. I think this is one of the most expensive one at this moment. And yeah, with an expensive price, we're going to get a lot of great things. But I'm curious how good this thing will be because is this the Steam Deck killer or is it just another, let's say, basic light product? That's what we're going to find out today. I just want to do the unboxing with you guys. So here for the reminder, the reminder is basically like a quick explanation, like what you need to do, because this device runs on Windows. And that is something you don't see very often, or I think this is the first time of Ambenic that did this. So I'm curious how this thing will be. Is this like the replacement for my Steam Deck? All right, so everything has been packed up very nicely. This is like absolutely like this premium feel that we're going to get. So the handheld is kind of beefcake and it feels quite heavy, like really heavy. So we do get some wipes, of course the explanation, the manual, Embernic Wind 600 user manual, that just tells you how everything works. Very happy that they did this. So in here we're going to get ourselves like a screen protector, I don't know if they're going to do this with every single pack. Because I didn't early like order this, there was like a small discount. And yeah, this thing is absolutely expensive when you're looking at the previous one. So I'm curious like, like what are we able to play with this. So let's see what we're going to get in here. Ooh, we're going to get ourselves a very nice charger. Let's see if we, oh, that, this cannot be replaced, so you need to be careful. I mean, like the connection, sometimes you have like the universal ones, but it's not the case over here. So you need to be careful like which one you're going to order. So the charger itself, let's see, it's an five volt, 12 volt, 18 volt, and like all kinds of voltages. That's basically they're using this. That's not your typical travel one. Comes with a Type-C connection and of course a cable that comes with it. So that is very nice. Let's see what we're going to get more. There is nothing more for the money. Her minis. Okay, so the first impression I have of this is like, holy crap, this thing is quite heavy. But let's take a close look at the weight and how does it feel compared with the Steam Deck. All right, so let's do a quick side by side with the Steam Deck. And what you can see over here, what you're having with the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Switch Lite, we do have like the same thing going on over here. So you can see like the Steam Deck is absolutely beefcake. But when you're looking at the design itself, you can see this thing is made very weirdly. Where you have like your just your typical handheld, but you can see where I do have like some ergonomics like positions where you can leave your hands in. With the Steam Deck, this is done such a weird way, but in a very super comfortable way. In my opinion, when you're holding it, I think, like, I don't know what they did with the freaking Steam Deck. Just the D-pad, the way how everything has been put, especially when you look at the side buttons over here, you will say, like, hey, what's a kind of weird position, but everything plays so comfortable. And, yeah, when you're looking at the Win 600, it's not that's going to be, like, weirdly, like, it's not going to be, like, less comfortable because the D-pad is not over here. No, because the positioning of your hands is completely different. When you're holding it, you can just reach the shoulder buttons fairly easy over here. Like, they also, like, make the R2 and the L2 a little bit bigger so you can reach it a little bit bigger also easier. We do have everything by reach. The only thing I really don't like about it is like why you want to play with the analog sticks. There you need to like put your hands in such a weird positions where we have with the Steam Deck, they absolutely nailed it. I personally never use it or don't really use it a lot. But think about if you want to play some shooters and you're just walking around with Orcs Must Die. We're also going to do a side-by-side -side comparison later on. But then we do have like an, a weird situation going, over, going on over here because... Also, I don't like the Nintendo Switch joystick. They are too tiny. The travel is different. So when it comes to the layout itself, I personally prefer the Steam Deck. But when it comes to the size and the way how it looks, I personally really love the Amadeq Win 600. So do I have like a quick side by side of the two devices? Okay, so let's try the Steam Deck just for the weight. This thing weighs 600. It has a little bit of trouble, but let's say let's 660. Let's try the Win 600. And that's kind of weird. Like, you would say, like, the Emmanuel weighs heavier, but when you're just putting them side by side, you can see, like, the Win 600 is so much lighter. Weirdness. But let's take a close look at the layout and the handle itself and what we can do with it. Also, you need to do a lot of configuration. I'm going to do that off camera, of course, if you want to try out some gaming, because that is something you always need to take consideration. This is not a handheld. You can just grab out of the box and play. You need to do a lot of tinkering. 
So at the left side we're going to get ourselves the home button, the D-pad itself. The D-pad feels very nice, it's a quite long travel one, but the feel is very nice. Do we get an extra button, this thing is called the select. Then we do have like the joystick, what I already mentioned, this is more like Nintendo's with joystick with a click. I'm personally not a big fan of those. So at the left side we're going to get ourselves the volume control in here, and then we do have like the on and off switch. So the button cannot be reached fairly easy, so you don't need to be afraid you're going to accidentally like power off in your system. So at the bottom we do have the option for an audio jack or a headphone. A quite interesting feature what you can see over here, we do have like a switch between the controller and the mouse. Then here I like even option for uh, requesting the keyboard. So we do have like some interesting features on this device. So at the top what we can find is the reset, but yeah, you need to have like something like a paper clip to use that. We do have like an input for a fast port like a USB 3.0 and of course the Type-C for connecting for the DC and we have the exhaust out for the fan. And here at the back we can find some more information. For example here we do have like the intake for the fan. Alright, so let's power it on for the first time. I just wanted to do this with you. Here at the front we do get this LED. It's not super bright, but I personally really find it always like very annoying if they're going to put an LED over here. So the next thing that we need to do is setting it up right like the tiny paper also said over here. If you have internet, you need to connect it with your account. If you don't have to, we do it offline mode. I personally really prefer to do it offline mode, by the way. Yeah. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is remove the screen protector. I'm always leaving these things on. Don't know why. All right. Okay, so I'm changing my shutter speed to 50. All right, now we don't have any flickering because I think it's quite annoying to look at. So the next thing that we need to do is going to the windows, selecting everything. I really love the touch screen. You can see my hand is moving a little bit weirdly because I'm having 50 FPS now. Hi there, FBS I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. Cortana, yeah, go away, shut the up. So much better. So like with every Windows device, we need to set it up. So this is the part where they warned you about, like I don't have any internet, so I don't need to have all the other nonsense. No, connect with limited setup. That's one of the ways to go to. You know, like this is the part where you're going to sell your soul beside to, let's say, the companies like Google. You're just going to <laughs> sell it to Windows Microsoft. You can see that over there where you're clicking OK, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. You know how it goes. All right, so next up, let's try this. Let's win 600. So I really love the. space all right so we're just going to leave it like that who's going to use the pc yeah me so shut the hell up create a memorable password no i don't want that i don't want to have my password Ugh. all right when set the password of course i'm doing this because i'm on offline mode logging into your microsoft account will be like so much easier no i don't want to do that now And that's basically like one of those many things that you need to do. And that's the way I just wanted to warn you, like this is a device like a Windows laptop. So the next thing we can do is like loading up emulators. You want to load up like Steam whatsoever, but you just need to do a lot of tinkering with this. Okay, so I just want to give you like a quick look also into the joystick mode. When you basically like put them in here, you can just hear the pingling sound of Microsoft or Windows. And you can do anything like you just use the touch screen Putting in mouse cursor mode, you can navigate with the mouse here at the left and you can use the shoulder buttons if you like. So I think it's pretty damn cool and also a feature that he implemented into the Embernic. The Win 600 comes in two variations. I've bought the 3050E model because I wanted to see how far we can push it with a max boot of 2.8 GHz. Nevertheless, I'm curious about that, and of course if you don't want to load up a Dolphin emulator, maybe even the 3020 will be good enough and a little bit cheaper for you. But in this part I'm just using an external hard drive. It's more like a convenient thing for myself, but of course if you're going to plug in an USB or a thumb drive, it would be so much easier. But when you're looking at the bottle share of a window, we have so much stuff that we can play. But if you're spending like over 400 freaking euro, 
yeah, you just want to have more than your typical handheld than what Embranix is offering because we do have like a lot of stuff that can be played on let's say a 100 or maybe a 150 dollar costing freaking device. The question remains, what can we play? So that we're going to look into the high-end stuff specially because I wanted to see if we can finally play some N64 decent enough. Okay, so the first game I wanted to play is some Cruise in the USA, a game that doesn't run very well on a lot of devices because we don't have enough power. Let's see if we're going to get a good performance here. It doesn't improve my freaking driving skills. But what you can see over here, where we do have like a lot of stutters with it come, when it comes to cruising the USA on normal or cheaper devices, we don't have this on the Emmanik Win 600. I've played this game so much on the N64. Okay, but it makes no sense for buying a freaking expensive device like this to play some old school PC engine because this runs just fine. On a cheaper device but i just wanted to show it anyway because this is just one of my favorite games to play on the pc engine and also the embernet got some pretty damn good sound to it So next up, Sega Dreamcast. So we do have like a lot of Embernic devices that can play this absolutely great. Alright, so another system I'm curious about is the Sega Saturn with Panzer Dragoon. You can hear some hiccups, but not like the point, I think it's unplayable. You can see that it struggles, I'm not running on the disgusting constant 60. So one thing is for sure, like PlayStation 1 room run just fine on this. So is this actually like a cool thing to play on the gigantic Win 600 display? Yeah, absolutely, but but if you just want to play some PlayStation 1 on the go, there are so many ways to do so. And this device is absolutely a gigantic overkill. Maybe you can squeeze out a little bit more performance and think about yeah, high resolutions, but that's it. Okay guys, so let's try some PlayStation Portable. Unfortunately, we cannot see the FPS. Somehow it's messed up. But you can just see it runs on full speed, or I can tell you it runs on full speed. I'm losing an original resolution, no frame skip. So it is pretty damn awesome. You have a gigantic screen now. But take consideration if you're going to play a different game, you can even put it on different higher scales, so it really looks so much better.
Alright, so next up let's play some PlayStation 2 because I think that is one of those systems that makes this thing really interesting if it's going to be running okay. But I did see some hiccups here and there and even some slowdowns that makes it unplayable. So my opinion, quite unfortunate. Oh. And I put it all freaking very hard, but no, I'm not good at this game at all. When you're going to put it on that level. The only thing is, like, I was quite surprised playing some Jet Set Radio Future because this game seems to be running very well. Or better said, this particular game. Of course, if you're going to deep dive through a couple of games, it may be possible some will not run. It's also like the question, like, how is the compatibility with some games? and the emulator. Alright, so next up for the final test I wanted to check some GameCube just to see how that runs. We didn't have that great luck with PlayStation 2, but a Zero X is a very demanding game, so if this runs okay, some other games you will have even better performance with. major lag but it doesn't spill the fun. In the next part, I wanted to test out the video games or the Windows game itself. But after loading it up for a couple of hours, because I need to have transferred a lot of data, this is the result. The display seems to be broken. So there's a great opportunity to test out also the DV out function. So let's plug it in, the Type-C connection, and let's see what we can play when it comes to Windows games. All right, so let's try the first game. I'm just gonna be honest, I think this will be a great indie game system. But if you want to get into the high-end stuff, it's not just powerful enough. But let's play some Mini Motor X Racing. One of my favorite games. A lot of fun. Alright, so let's see if I can even play this game. It's been a very long time. Trying to find the button to accelerate. Yep. Oh, horrible. But what you can see over here, this game runs perfectly. Full resolution, full HD. Okay, so let's try some Cuphead. A little bit more demanding than the previous indie game. But also this seems to be running just fine. Oh, next up let's try another racing game. An awesome indie game that I really love. And again, no problem for the win 600. Mm. 
Next up, I wanted to get a little bit more into the, uh, more, the many games. So, for example, Dead Alive 6 need to get to 800 by 450. So, shadow resolution can be set to zero. Everything low, super low, the low, 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 low. And the reason why, otherwise, you cannot get a very nice stable FPS on this game. Alright, so for example, let's try a little bit of a gameplay and I will show you. So, like, even with loading up the characters, you can see some struggles here and there. So and the reason I just wanted to try some Dead Alive 6, uh, I think it's more the same when it comes to a Mortal Kombat or another Street Fighter game. This product is great for indie games, but if you want to get in the high-end stuff, you will see a lot of problems. The consideration I'm also using TV out, so even then we do have like some more demanding which makes you going on on the GPU but and again I'm not a biggest fan of this handheld if you want to play some I say more demanding fighting games or other ones like shoot shoot ups so you're hitting like 20 22 FPS absolutely horrible The Win 600 is a very interesting product. Unfortunately, I did have some issues. The reason I shown you it like this in my review, because I don't want to fix the display and then finish my review. I just want to show it as is. Personally, I really like the D-pad. The analog stick, not that much, because I am not the biggest fan of the analog stick. But when it comes to fighting games, the D-pad is absolutely great. The device itself is packed with all kinds of like extra buttons. For example, the Windows button, and Home button. And not even to talk about, like say, you have the extra button over here for getting into the keyboard or switching between a mouse and a joystick. And especially the joystick mode works very well, including for me in Balasera. But What do I like about the Win 600 and what do I not really like at all? To begin with, that's what do I like. So, what I like about it is that the device, the form factor looks pretty damn cool. We can play so many games thanks to the windows. And of course, we do have like a lot of potential with Balasera. We do have some limitation, of course, like always, because this is not like the most powerful handheld you can buy. But for the price point you're paying for it, is it extra worth your money? It's more the question to you, like, what do you want to play? And the downside is, it's just simply the battery life, because the battery life is not great on this. I want to thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of this? It would be great to see you in the next video, so hit that little bell, and it would be great yeah, just to see you in the next video.